my project was focused on e-portfolios, and after attending the NISA Teachers Conference, I realized it was too narrow. One of my personal goals this year was to improve professional development in the middle school. So therefore, I changed my goal for this project to transforming professional de development to ensure that it was more engaging and appropriate for teachers with different skill sets and different curriculum areas. For example, teachers learn at different paces, so there needs to be systems um, in place to follow this. Therefore, my plan is to flip PD. I've started this on some level this year, but now I have more of an action plan that I would like to carry out next year with the entire middle school professional development. In doing so, there are many aspects that I've looked at, such as the net standards for, uh, for admin. The three main areas I'll focus on will, with the lens of professional development are standard two, to create a digital learning culture, an environment that is extremely engaging. Standard three, create excellence and professional practice so an environment of professional learning enhanced through technology and reflection, standard five. Digital citizenship, which models responsibility in a digital culture. The various tools that um, primarily were used uh, this year were YouTube and Google Docs, um, but next year with the carrying out this action plan, um, Blogger and Digo and Web 2.0 tools will um, be used. The teachers will need to develop um, new skills specifically in Blogger and other Web 2.0 um, tools and there will be plenty of resources for the teachers and students um, to help assist. But since there will be such a varied skill level, the different modules and options of videos and application sessions um, and discussion will allow everyone to work at their individual pace. Works. If these were regular tests, what I would do is I would find the smartest students, Maya, and I would mark hers first. Right. Then I'd use that as my answer key. But these are essay questions. Now, if I were to read these, it would take forever. So I don't. So I look at their mark going into it. Okay, like Maya, where's Maya? Has the highest mark in the class. There she is. So that's my answer key. Don't you already know the answers? Mm, sometimes theirs are better. Use this clip this year. Um, you know, just to kind of engage the faculty and emphasize the point that grades can often be uh, arbitrary and they should not be. You can see here the entire action plan with all of the, the goals, the, the tasks, and then the learning plan. So with the overall goal of transforming professional development in the middle school to ensure a higher level of engagement and to create create it for different teachers with different skill sets. There are three major enduring understandings that I'm taking a look at. The first one is to learn about critical nature of goal setting. And so the task will be to, um, to establish measurable goals and reflect on their PLP goals. The learning plan for that enduring understanding will be to learn more about goal setting and to to read a book collectively, discuss it and share ideas and feedback via Google Docs. Then with the reflection on PLPs, I want to transform PLPs to make them a little bit more meaningful and sh for the faculty to create their own personal learning network and to share out their PLPs so that there's more conversation with with their colleagues. At the end of the year to be able to reflect back on their PLP via a video or their blog um, to, to see how they, they met their goals. The next enduring understanding is to understand the value of the e-portfolio and the task corresponding with that is to create their own personal um, blog via blogger and to assist students in creating their e-portfolio. E the e-portfolio has uh, quite an extensive learning plan where the, uh, the committee is presenting them out, the ideas to the grade level teams, sharing 
student blog examples discussing so that there's adequate question and answer so that there's enough buy-in. Following that, there'll be a lot of coaching, exploration, in establishing their own faculty blog. And then finally, to establish different modules with corresponding videos so that the professional development can be self-paced. Self finally, um, it will be critical to have kind of like a genius bar, which I can see happening perhaps in the laptop lounge. And it can be students or teachers that where they can get assistance in working on their um, blog. The last enduring understanding is to be able to reflect on their own practice with the intention of further developing 21st century skills. And being able to do this, this is where we've started this year and coll collaboratively creating rubrics, but next year hopefully to work further on assessments and sharing them using Google Docs. Modeling uh, the, an online presence for the students and demonstrate the use of Web 2.0 tools and again that reflection piece that's so critical with the, the goal setting and it connects all of the different pieces with the ePortfolio and the 21st century skills. And to do to meet these enduring understandings, there'll be presentations via YouTube, which I did this year, to share via Google Docs rubrics and create the terms and discuss further ways to improve, create the common descriptors, which we were able to successfully do this year, um, and then to create that um, the blog for the faculty that don't already currently have them. Additionally, to um, continue the focus on the middle school DEGO group so the faculty can share and use, and use resources. And again, that final piece is that, that reflection. And some people may choose to use a video, some people may use uh, a blog, but then to, to share that back out with their personal learning network. This year we, we started to take a look at, um, at rubrics and trying to come up with some uh, common language to assess the students connected with the, the benchmarks. Can you just give a little bit of feedback on um, the professional development and the faculty meeting if you felt it was effective um, and what components you thought were effective and what could be further improved? I thought the professional development this year was very effective. It really addressed the needs, I believe, of the middle school, rolling into a standards-based um, classrooms with standards-based assessments, um, and then really addressing the rubrics. I thought it was great, especially using the common language, for me especially, being able to just go to my Google Drive and find the same um, rubrics that everyone else is using, the same common language, has been great. Pulling out just a few words and trying, you know, instead of trying to figure out what those words are on my own has been very helpful, I think. We certainly have addressed a lot of the needs that we needed to this year. Do you um, think that um, sharing them with colleagues um, collaboratively and via Google Docs is an um, effective tool? Um, just to kind of improve and um, see how other people are developing the rubrics? Absolutely. You know, sharing and collaborating with colleagues I think is essential for any school or any program to put together curriculum or assessments or uh, anything that you're doing in the classroom. You know, planning units, collaboration is, is key and whether we're doing it through Google Docs or through our Google Drive or online or, you know, face-to-face -face is uh, essential in my opinion. Why is it important for teachers? Why is it important for teachers to under understand the value of ePortfolios and hopefully potentially um, to model that behavior with the students? Okay, um, ePortfolios do have a dual importance with teachers and with students. First of all, with teachers, 
uh, it's really important professionally to understand where you are and where you're going and to have your own goals. So if you use an e-portfolio to start your goals at the beginning of the year, to put forth your evidence that you've done throughout the year and then reflect on it periodically, then you're going to become a better teacher. In the same way, if a student has an electronic portfolio and they set goals for themselves at the beginning of the year and they input evidence during the course of the year and then reflect on how far they've come since the beginning of the year, then they're also going to see a lot of growth. I think if a teacher truly believes in what they're doing, then the student will show more growth. And whether the student sees the teacher's e-portfolio or not, having one will give you a better understanding of how it works and how to communicate it to your students. There is evidence of learning, and I think it can be seen with the common descriptors for rubrics that a tremendous amount of progress was made. The middle school started out with a general rubric template but was lacking uh, common language and the, it was not necessarily being connected back to the benchmarks uh, corresponding to the standards. Additionally, the rubrics were often very difficult for the students and parents to understand and as they became more actively involved in the communication about standards-based reporting, this was an area that they expressed confusion. So this started the discussion about how to grade more consistently, consistently as a faculty. Therefore, we started with taking the look at common descriptors, and we decided as a faculty, and then ultimately after that, we revamped to a new rubric template. And you can see here one filled out for a math project, uh, and it's much more clearly articulated what the benchmarks are, and it's it's easy to understand for the teachers, students, and parents. Something that I would do differently next time and starting next year is that I hope to to do this more collaboratively outside of the faculty and department meetings. And doing so, I think it's critical that the faculty build their own personal learning networks so that they have other avenues for sharing outside of those two meetings. I think the greatest part of the COTEL program is it forced me to look outside and to see what other people are doing in their classrooms and in other international schools and to be able to reflect on my own current practices to, to give myself some some more focused goals on what I need to do. I do feel this project met uh, re redefinition in many different ways, specifically in tackling the rubric this year. We were able to change the task and to create more of a systemic common language for assessing students. And this would not have been able to be accomplished without technology because people felt more comfortable with sharing via Google Docs and then different platforms rather than just face-to-face -to, -face, um, to ensure that they, they felt safe in doing so. Next year, with my action plan, the technology becomes quite critical because there will be different self-paced modules and that will only be um, able to, to be accomplished with technology. And reflecting on my own personal learning network and where I need to go is I need to continue building a greater network of administrators through Coketail and hopefully break into the world of Twitter. With this entire action plan, um, it will be critical that I model this practice of reflecting and sharing with others by the, through the use of my blog.